Hey guys, so welcome to the dyeing studio. I am actually in here today working on the skeins of yarn for my first round of the Colorfest Sock Set Club for Fiber for the People. And I'm super excited. This is my first uh, yarn club uh, and li listings are closed, but I'm getting ready to dye up the first round. These are gonna be completely one of a kind colorways, never gonna be in the shop. Um, I, I actually have to say that they won't ever be in the shop for sale, but there is going to be an odd number of them. So I will have some that I think I'm planning on using as giveaways on the podcast. Um, we'll see. Because I made a promise to my members that they would not appear in the shop. So they would have truly one of a kind skeins. Um, and I might actually keep the odd man out, so who knows? I'm pretty excited about it. So right now I'm just gonna get my yarn prepped uh, in the soak buckets and start kind of brainstorming what I'm gonna do with this color and I'll show you the picture I'm using for inspiration in just a minute. show you the picture that I'm using for inspiration for this particular um, colorway that I'm doing here. Now, if you're not familiar with the way the Colorfest Sock Club set works, what I'm doing is I'm designing colorways based on colorful festivals around the world. And um, the reason I came up with this, and I've mentioned this a few times before, I was watching some kind of a documentary on YouTube about festivals all around the world, and I was noticing how color plays such an important part um, in each of these festivals and some of the festivals kind of like the one I'm going to show you today is pretty much based on color and um, So I'm going to show you the photo and we're going to talk a little bit about how we can pull inspiration from this um, We'll talk about that in a second But the first uh, celebration that I'm using for the sock set club is called Holly and Holly is called uh, It's a festival of color and it takes place in India and you can tell if you're familiar with the color run um, in the United States or wherever they do color runs. I know it's not just an American thing, but um, they it's it's a 5K or some kind of a race, uh, a running race where they throw dry paint at you and you become just this beautiful, colorful mess when you're all finished. That's kind of what this reminds me of because I think that dry paint is being used here. Now I'm not going to go into great deal detail about the history of this festival right now because the purpose of this is just to talk about how we can pull inspiration from this photo uh, to come up with a colorway. And uh, I'm, I'm excited for the members of the Sock Club. If you're watching right now, hi, and thank you so much for supporting the first ever Fiber for the People Yarn Club. And enjoy, because this is gonna be kind of a cool background, behind the scenes look at how your colorway was made, which you probably already have at this point. Um, anyway, that's kind of the purpose of this video, is just to talk about pulling inspiration from photographs like this. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Okay, you're gonna have to pardon a couple things. The first thing is the cicadas are going nuts. So in the desert, when monsoon season comes around, mid-July all the way until, I mean, they, they consider monsoon season like from mid-July to like October. Um, but in the it, it's intense, it really is. It's uh, muggy and warm. Um, the cicadas are buzzing like crazy. The clouds around the valley are gorgeous, these giant, huge cumulonimbus clouds that just are threatening thunderstorms all over the place. Um, it's really a, a pretty incredible time here in the desert, but um, it definitely makes for really sweaty outdoor conditions. And so apologize for the sweat, apologize for the cicadas. Um, that's it, I'm done apologizing. I have the photo here. This is a photo that I pulled off the internet and it is of the um, Celebration Holly, which takes place in India, and it's a color festival. And so these are just people dancing, uh, having a really great time, throwing these bombs of color everywhere. Everybody kind of leaves this festival looking like a giant rainbow or a small rainbow, I guess, depending on the size of the person. That's bad. Okay, I am going to be using, and I want you to see up here because there's some more color up here that I think the camera is maybe blowing out a little bit, but there's, you know, some like really pretty green, minty green yellows. Obviously pink is a very strong color in this photo. Um, of course, there's this white space up here. 
uh, lots of things going on in this photo. Now, when I look at photos like this, there's always your first immediate impression that you see. And, and the first thing that pops out is the dark space and the pink space. It, to me, uh, it might be different for you, but to me, that's the first thing I really see. And I think I could, okay, uh, an obvious color combination here would be pink and, and black, some kind of a dark or, or dark gray or something. Um, that's kind of the first impression that I would get from this. But I like to look at photos like this and instead of going, because I feel like this photo could lend itself to a colorway that's already pretty common. And that isn't to say that having a colorway that is reminiscent of another colorway, um, that there's anything wrong with that, uh, because it's, you know, that, that happens from time to time. Um, some of our colorways can be derivative of others that maybe are already out there, whether we've seen those colorways or not. It's just that I like to kind of look beyond that first impression to see if I can pull out something else interesting in the photo. Maybe that sounds like kind of snobby, but that's not the point. The point is that I'm trying to stretch my creativ creativity here. Um, and find some inspiration in an aspect of this photo that maybe wouldn't be obvious at first glance. My first place to look, and I'm gonna circle it with my pencil here, the first place that I'm looking and I'm finding something is right here. So there's a girl right here, and she <laughs> she's wearing kind of like this muted color compared to these other people that are wearing white. Uh, she has almost like a gray color on. She's covering her face. She's wearing a hat. It almost looks like she got stuck in like the middle of this celebration and she didn't really intend on being there. I think it's it's interesting. My eyes drawn to that. That's kind of an interesting part of this. And so that makes me think I would like to make one of the colorways that I incorporate here this like real muted gray color. So I'm going to go with some of that. Pink is obviously going to be a part of this colorway. I mean, come on, it has to be, right? Because that's such a huge part of this photo here. And, and part of the challenge for myself when I came up with this uh, this sock set club was that I was going to choose a photo and stick to the photo. I wasn't just gonna go hunt down photos that I thought uh, would make it easy to come up with a colorway. I wanted to find a photo that I thought was a really great, you know, um, kind of representation of that festival and, and stick to that photo as my inspiration, not, you know, go out and find the easy route. So that's kind of what's happening here. So I'm definitely gonna make this gray, you know, a factor in the colorway and this pink. This yellow portion right here really stands out to me too. I like that. I think yellow is really kind of a hot ticket right now in colorways and so I'm definitely going to uh, utilize some of that yellow. And then black. I want black or, or a really dark gray to definitely play a role in this as well. And then this white space up here, this blown out section of the photo uh, photograph, this um, makes me think of bare yarn. And whether or not I keep the yarn completely bare or if I just keep it a very light muted color, I definitely wanna have some portion of the yarn that's, uh, very, that's naked. Not completely naked, but very light. Definitely a light contrast to the rest of the color. I love the uh, spearmint green happening right here. You really have to be careful with a spearmint green when you're mixing it in with other colors. It's a blue green and uh, the individual dyes that go into making a spearmint green are predominantly blue and so you may you might be adding spearmint green into a colorway thinking that you're gonna have an interaction uh, similar to what would happen if you mixed green. Um, not necessarily the case. You're, you're gonna have more of an interaction um, that would be reminiscent of mixing blue with your color. So some, some to keep track of there. But I definitely wanna see if I can incorporate some kind of a spearmint into this. And then this person right here has this like vest on and there's this like what it looks to me, I don't know what the true color is, but it looks to me as a, an orange he got like blasted with like an orange color bomb. And I like that, I kinda like this like orange. She's got it on her top a little bit right here, this like fluorescent orange color. I like that. So big uh, factors that I'm thinking here and I'm gonna write this down. Okay, so I'm definitely thinking that I wanna do some kind of a, maybe like a muted charcoal gray. I'm also thinking that definitely splashes pink. I want to incorporate some kind of black. I'm not sure if it's going to be black or like a really dark gray. How I'm going to do that, I'm not 100% sure. Definitely like the orange spearmint aspect to it as well. And then of course, I love me some yellow and colorways right now. So I'm just going to kind of keep this written down. 
Um, these are gonna be the main features that I pulled from this. Now the technique that I use for dyeing these kind of just comes to me as I go. Um, sometimes I plan out how I'm gonna do it, what technique I'm gonna use, and sometimes I just kind of let, you know, my pots and my yarn and my dye speak to me. So right now I'm just gonna keep track of this and uh, move forward.